Hello, this is TJ with the Counterpunch Trader. It's been a very interesting week. We have a lot of new members joining us for the first time this week. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a walkthrough with some of our popular markets. I'm going to focus on the Dowie Mini on this video. This is a trade plan that we do in the trade room. We've been using the same trade plan for nearly a year. It incorporates some of the higher end sophisticated aspects to the counterpunch trader. Uh, mainly, we trade this in what we call trend mode. Trend mode is another way to use the counterpunch trader. The trades that are selected are pickier. They have to agree with our directional indicator. So you can apply this to your chart. Basically what it means is when the line is red, we're not going to take long trades. So you notice right here there's a long trade, but it's gray. That means you don't take it, basically. We're going to track that trade. It's possible the conditions will change and that trade will come back online. But when you see the gray trade, you don't take it because you don't go long against the red line. You only go long when the line is blue, like right here. Okay, so this trade plan starts at 8.30 in the morning central time. That's right when the U.S. stock market opens. Because it's traded out of Chicago, we use exchange time. We refer to all our times and timestamps on these trades with central standard time. If this was the Russell, which is traded out of New York, the same trade would be at 9.30. This is Monday session on the 28th. And you can see that it is already 8.30, and we're just waiting for a setup. There's a, a setup to go short here, but the line is still blue. And then we get a new setup after the line turns red. And you'll notice it's at 8.31, so it's one minute after our start time. You have the entire trade laid out for you, your entry, your targets, your stops. With this trade plan, we use it as a three position approach. You could use it as a one or two or even four position approach. Basically, we're taking a third of our profit at target one, a third at target two, and a third at target three. Some traders are not taking profit at target one and instead are trailing the signal line and you could do that as well very flexible okay so it triggers in short and it quickly pushes down well maybe not so quickly ultimately it finds its way down to target one you'll notice that it took a little bit of time the stop is up here very choppy session to start with but it got us on the right side of the trade. The market ultimately capitulated lower. And when it hit target one, the stop moved down, working around the key level of 16,100. So instead of locking in one tick, as you would normally expect it to do, it adjusted back up around the key level. It didn't really matter because as the bars kept printing, the stop started to trail the signal line. And you'll see there's additional trades, but we don't take those. We're not interested in those. Okay, with this trade plan, we just stick with the trade that we're in. We don't take additional trades in the same direction. So we just ignore those. And target one definitely rewards us with 22 points, and then it comes back up and stops out for a small partial profit. Now, the trade plan wants us to have two target one winners or one target two winner and a positive result okay and then we quit for the day now this didn't quite get down to target two it only got to target one so we have to take one more trade to satisfy the trade plan everything we do is based on trade plans we don't just take trades in a vacuum we don't take trades just for the sake of taking trades. We take them as they relate to the rules of our trade plan. All right, so we have to take one more trade, and we're waiting for it to set up. And ultimately, you see a couple long trades here. They would have triggered in, but the line is red coming down. The next trade is a short trade right here, and that's the second trade of the day. And it triggers in comes down when it hits target one once again the stop normally is going to lock in one tick 
but because of how we have our calculator configured, it pushes the stop up a little bit and doesn't completely eliminate all the risk because it's working around a key level of 16,090. So it puts the stop at 16,091. But then it trails down. We hit target one, target two, target three. And you can see what those produce. 10 points, 14 points, 20 points. And those that trailed were able to take it down to here. Not quite as far as target three. But a really nice trade, a very successful session, and we're done for Monday. Let's take a look at Tuesday's trades. All right, so I scooted the chart forward to Tuesday's trades. And you can see that it's just been really choppy early on. And you got a lot of setups in here, but you know what? We're not interested in any of this. We don't even have to concern ourselves with it. Our trade plan starts at 8.30 Central Standard Time. So here we are at 8.20. Finally, it's 8.30, but these trades had already run their course. So we're waiting for a fresh trade. And we ultimately get one right here at 8.32. Very straightforward. We're in trend mode. Remember that. So when the line is red, we take short trades. Triggered in. And kind of bounced around a little bit. But the stop is up here, well placed. Ultimately found its resistance. Markets move like that, don't they? They tend to give you an action move, reaction move, often a subsequent action move. It's kind of how this one played out. Had a little bit of consolidation before resuming its move down. But look at how we were able to pick up a pretty nice size target one, target two, target three, and those who wanted to trail. Again, the trailer not quite producing as much as target three. That was good for 29 points, 44 points, and 60 points. An excellent session. 133 points if you're trading all three positions. And guess what? Target two winner, positive result. The trade plan says take what the market wants to give you. You're done for the day. One and done. Let's take a look at today's trades. Today was September 30th, Wednesday. Let's see how it fared. Okay, so here we are on September 30th. This is 8.30 right here. There's no trades for us to take. You might say, why is this grayed out? Because the indicator is red. Don't you take short tra trades into with the red line? The answer is yes, except that we have other filters as well. We have our chop filter working down here that eliminated this trade. So we have to just be patient. At 8.34, there's this long setup here, but it happened too late price had already gotten away from the trade. If it would have pulled back to touch the entry, we could have grabbed that trade. Or even if it got within two ticks of that entry, we could have made a little adjustment and grabbed that trade. Okay, this trade is really this one over here that got filtered out, but since the conditions changed, it came back on. Okay, because the line turned blue. But at that point, it was already too late. So filters are a double-edged sword. Sometimes they're going to filter out some trades you don't want to be in and other times you might miss a move and it's just the nature of filters so it doesn't matter we let that go we're still waiting for our first trade and a similar thing happens here where the setup occurs where the line is blue and then since the conditions hadn't changed the setup becomes valid once the line turns red and it did come up and it did hit the entry unfortunately it wasn't able to get much lower. Looked like it was going to go down. Looked like we were doing pretty good. But this is a super chop choppy market, and it ends up stopping and reversing. When we stop and reverse, we make a tiny adjustment. Instead of getting in at 61, we add two ticks. We want to protect the trade we're in while also respecting the fact that the market could be changing direction. So we took this trade two ticks higher at 63. And it did trigger in, and it came up after a lot more chop. Ultimately, it worked its way up and hit target one perfectly on the nail right there. You see that all the way across? And once it hit target one, well, that was good for 34 points. 
And then the stop moved up and locked in some profit, started trailing the, the signal line, and it came off and stopped out for a partial profit. That was another 15 points at that trailer. So 32 points at target one, 15 points. The trade that stopped and reversed lost 26 points per position. So we're still down. We need one more trade, maybe more, but hopefully one more to get positive. And here you go, a trade that was filtered out because the line was blue, but then it turned red and the trade came on and the price hit the entry and so now we're short. Look how choppy this is. The stop is up here and look at how it held. These stops are well placed. They're there for a reason. Never trade without them. Price pushed down, hit target one. That was 14 points. The stop moved down. Working around the key level adjustment like we saw in the other examples the quarter century number instead of putting in a stop at 73 it pushed the stop up to 76 those quarter century numbers 25s 50s 75s hundreds those are considered major key levels okay so again it wouldn't have mattered because after it hit target one, it just kept on going. And then the stop moved down as well, finally locking in some profit. But it hit target two, and that was good for 22 more points. It came down and hit target three, good for another 30 points, and trailed down to here. So a really excellent session. And the net result, not counting the trailer, of course, this one where it stopped out for a partial, but if you're taking profit at target one, target two, target three, or stopping out with partials if it doesn't get go as far enough, right? All that added up to a 50-point session today. And it was the third winning session in a row. And actually, it was the fifth winning session in a row because we also had a really nice winner last Friday and a winner on uh, the Thursday, last Thursday as well. So we've had five winning sessions in a row and a brand new record uh, profit level reached on the Dow E-mini. And what I want you to take away from this video is how well the strategy and the trade plan handled three very choppy sessions with lots of red and green, lots of spikes and wicks on all these bars. But just by following the sequence, right, knowing what to ignore, once we were long here, we weren't interested in any additional long trades, letting the filters filter stuff out for us. When we were long here, we didn't get short here because of the filter. Notice the chop filter. The chop filter prevented this short trade. Stayed gray, we ignore it. And that allowed this trade to ultimately work its way up to a really nice target. And so while it looks like a lot going on in this chart, you just have to understand, you train your eyes and you begin to learn what to look for. We're staying with our long trade. Once the long trade finishes, we were not yet positive after two trades. We needed one more for the trade plan rules. We got the short, we hit our targets, met our conditions for quitting for the session, and we're able to walk away with a really strong winning session yet again on the Dow E-mini. All right, so I hope that was informative. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is TJ with the Counterpunch Trader. See you on the next one.